This episode of the Answer is Yes Baja Sessions is brought to you by Baja Bound Insurance Services. Driving to Mexico? You can buy and print out your Mexican auto insurance policy online in minutes with their easy-to-use website. They also have great travel information to help you plan your trip south of the border. Visit BajaBound.com. Hello, this is Ryan Thomas, and you're listening to the Baja Sessions. Over the last three decades, I've lived, worked, and played from the top to the tip of the majestic peninsula of Baja, California. And because of this, I've met some incredibly interesting people with equally interesting stories. And today on the Baja Sessions, we're going to chat with one of them. In 1940, John Steinbeck, the author of Of Mice and Men and the Grapes of Wrath, chartered the fishing vessel The Western Flyer. With his best friend, marine biologist Ed Ricketts, the author sailed to Mexico's Sea of Cortez on a six-week journey that yielded a pioneering book about the fledging scientific disciplines of ecology and marine conservation. Seventy-five years later, in February of 2015, a marine geologist with a lifelong interest in Steinbeck and Ricketts named John Gregg bought the Western Flyer. He then started the Western Flyer Foundation to specialize in merging the arts and science together in a holistic approach to learning and hopefully inspiring the next generation of biologists, environmentalists, artists, and researchers. Well, John, it's great to have you on the podcast here. I'm really looking forward to uh, diving a little deeper into this project that you've uh, undertaken here with the Western Flyer. And uh, I'm going to confess right off the front that um, I don't know much about it other than what I've been able to read on uh, your website and then a little bit of, of um, some YouTube video watching with your, uh, your boat restorer. Or um, Actually, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an actual term for his, what he does, and I'll let you fill me in on that. So again, yeah, welcome well, to the show and happy to have you here. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, his uh, I guess his title's Shipwright. They, Shipwright, they like, that's like right. That yes, title. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to fill in some of the basic blanks here for the listeners, and then uh, you can kind of take it from there and give us some background. You uh, sure. are a business person, successful drilling. Uh, is it all aquatic based, or do you drill into the dirt uh, on dry land as well? Uh, mostly dry land. I'm a geotechnical engineer. Okay. We do uh, a lot of uh, earthquake studies and that sort of thing, foundation analysis. So okay. Most, so, mostly on land, but, uh, you know, in the water a, a bit. So successful uh, business based out of Southern California. I think I did read that you're now multi-state in the United States with your company. Um, but that's not yeah. why we're on the phone today. <laughs> um, yeah. You either own a boat or are the founder of, of a foundation, and you can correct me there, but um, the topic of today's conversation is going to be uh, more or less based around the Western Flyer, which is a, a ship, I guess is the best word to use, um, and you have a foundation that you have started around that ship, and I'll let you kind of take it from there. Tell us about the Western Flyer. Um, and I'll give a hint here. It was a, a boat or a ship that John Steinbeck s- spent some time on. And since uh, since we are on a podcast called the Baja Sessions, I'm going to uh, let the, li- the listeners kind of figure out uh, where John Steinbeck might have been on this boat until you go ahead and fill us in. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the Western Flyers, a 78-foot purse saner out of Monterey. It was built in 1937 in Tacoma, Washington. And I, I guess I, I guess I don't own it. I think that it's it's one of those things that you're like a caretaker for for a while. That it has its own life and its own history that you know preceded me by by a lot, and it's it's going to have a long life after I'm out of the picture. So I think it's uh, it's an interesting story. I got interested in it a long time ago, and it's um, a place where you know Steinbeck and a, a scientist friend of his, Ed Ricketts. I went down on a six-week voyage into into Baja um, in 1940 to to look around and and see what they could see. The area hadn't been explored very much, and uh, the Hoover Dam had been uh, constructed a, a couple years before, and all of the fresh water that had been pouring into the upper reaches of Baja had stopped. So they wanted to kind of document what sort of environmental changes that would that would have. Uh, 
so wanted to that that was a stated reason i think mostly they wanted to go get away they, uh, <laughs> steinbeck had recently written a book called grapes of wrath which was really an uh, unpopular book in california because it was sort of um dramatizing the plight of of ag workers and they worked for some of the the, the big farms in california and how they were uh, basically being taken advantage of and uh steinbeck in the course of researching that book had been visiting a lot of these uh, migrant camps and in th- those days migrant farm workers weren't from from mexico as much as they were from oklahoma and in the center of the country and they were I think at one point in California during during that period there were something like seventy thousand people living in these camps. Wow! And they were they were starving to death. They they were the kids were eating grass and bark and and Steinbeck was just outraged. He couldn't believe that in a rich state, even then and during the depression, a rich state like California would have these these people. So he wrote the book and it became uh, wildly unpopular in California. So he was getting death threats and everything. So he he wanted to get away and. Ricketts was constantly, like most marine biologists, sleeping with somebody he shouldn't be. So he was looking <laughs> to get out of Monterey at the same time. So they they contracted this uh, this boat. It was off off season. They were, the sardines were were done, and there wasn't a lot to do. And there were a lot of boats in the harbor. Um, Steinbeck actually had a lot of trouble renting a boat. No nobody the the uh, Italian fishermen there. Um, thought he was a communist and it would have been the idea of going down to Baja where wasn't a lot known down there at that time. There, there was a, there was a guidebook called the daily pilot that you, you could use to kind of navigate your way around Baja, but it was, you know, long stretches of, of, of blank coastline that weren't that well understood by at least the mariners up in, uh, in California. I think the local people, you know, had real good idea what was going on, but they, um, they went down there and it was one of those things that, um, you know, there was this, uh, evolutionary biologist, uh, called Stephen J. Gold, who, who wrote about the fact that evolution doesn't happen in this like steady progression, steady, you know, state progression. It happens in fits and starts. Like he called it punctuated equilibrium where, uh, things would happen all of a sudden following something. So, that's kind of what happened with these guys. Um, in fact, Ricketts had, uh, he, he was, he was kind of a bohemian guy and he, he was, uh, kind of an expansive thinker and he could see patterns of things. In in fact, before Wikipedia and in, in Google, he, he'd taken like butcher paper and he wrote the whole history of the world in his lab, like every, every war, every, every plague and every, every thing that had ever happened that as far as he could get his hands on, and then he noticed, you know, when when scientific uh, breakthroughs would happen or music or any kind of cultural advancement usually followed one of these periods of real strife or, you know, the Black Death killed 30 percent of the people on Earth or something. But after that was this resurgence of, of music and art. So he he plotted all that. So he was coming up with the same sort of uh, punctuated equilibrium that had been noted later by these biologists. So he was. He was the first one to use the you know term um, environmentalism in, in 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 relation to the ocean. At that time, people thought the ocean was really limitless. And then when they were in in Baja and saw the Japanese trawlers basically strip mining the ocean there, you know, he said this is this is not going to last. You know, they're going to they fish the sea right out of these these species and. No, right. everybody laughed at him. They they didn't think that was possible, and and lo and behold, you know, that's what's happened. But you know, during the course of that little six week trip, it it um, you know, on the way down from Monterey to to San Diego, uh, Steinbeck was listening to a shortwave radio, and he he listened to the plight of the Norwegian re- resistance fighters fighting against the Nazis, and it was all you know they were using the radio, and he could hear the drama and and all this and. He used that information to write uh, a couple of his books later on, you know, one called uh, The Moon is Down. And when he, on, on the way from San Diego to Cabo, he, he listened to the the crewmen talk about, you know, all the shenanigans they were up to in, in Monterey. And, and he used those stories to write Cannery Row and, and Sweet Thursday. And, you know, he, he, he came around the, the end of the, the, the peninsula and he, you know, heard about the Indians and La Paz and the, 
the old pearl divers and he wrote the book the pearl and so most of the rest of his output from his whole life he gathered a lot of the information on that little six-week trip because he, he was so inspired by the the people in the in, in the landscape down there it's amazing that a place sure. can become so much a part of who you are when you really and i i say that all the time that baja has, has truly become a part of my soul and 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 uh it's part of my heartbeat almost really um so i i gotta say something that is fascinating to me is that uh people choose baja as a refuge and i was thinking about it um you know i, I read grapes of wrath when i was in school and as a classic, it wasn't something that, you know, whatever grade I was in, um, I didn't know that, that Steinbeck was, was harassed for his portrayal of that time period. Um, you know, by the time I'm reading it, it's already, you know, rock star status when it comes to, to books to read. So, um, I had this idea that Steinbeck was just a superstar and, and he was, you know, off to Baja to, to continue to be a superstar. But the reality of it is, is he was, uh, it sounds like depressed, concerned for his, maybe his life. I don't know, but but definitely seeking refuge and amazing that Baja was, it shouldn't, I shouldn't say is amazing. It, it, it's, it stands to reason that Baja was a refuge for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's in, in a lot of art, you know, songs and literature, a lot of people have, you know, Escaped to Mexico. I think that was what, <laughs> yeah. what he was doing. Right, right. Well, so th- what in the world drew you to an interest in whether it's Steinbeck, the boat, or Baja, or all of it? I mean, this is a, an interesting, and and uh, I believe I read somewhere that this was no, um, wasn't chump change to pick this boat up, I guess would be the best way to <laughs> no. put that. Um, oh, so you're pretty committed to this. I am. It's it's kind of a long and, and boring story, but if you if you want to hear it, I'll I'll tell you. Well, I will say I, that that I, I thought it was interesting. I do want to hear, and and I and, and I hate, or I'm sorry, I'm interrupting, but um, I thought it was interesting as I was reading um, that you are quoted somewhere saying that you you don't own something like this, and you you started this right. interview off by kind of reiterating that that yeah, yeah. you might have wrote the check for it, but at the end of the day, you're a custodian of of a piece of history. And I think it's cool that you recognize that. And uh, I think I did read somewhere that the prior owner, the prior custodian had different plans. So it sounds like it was rescued. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I guess that, that the guy that I bought it from was going to cut it into three pieces and put it in a restaurant in Salinas. But, you know, I'm not sure that that was ever going to be the boat's fate. It, I, it was probably more likely it was going to be crunched up as an environmental hazard because as soon as I, took possession of it, the boatyard where it was said, Oh, you know, that you, you might've written a check for one amount, but as far as we're concerned, the boat is worthless and <laughs> it's an environmental problem. And, and it kind of was, it was, you know, not only had, had sunk and it was full of mud, but it was, you know, when, when guys used to change the oil in, in old boats, they, they never would bring the oil up and take it to the recycler. They just opened the plug and they thought that sure. the oil would, would uh, kind of, uh, you know, condition the wood and, there was a stack of, you know, bat, marine batteries are heavy, and so they uh, just left them in a giant pile. I think there was 22 batteries there, just leaking acid and being generally noxious. So there, it was, you know, a bit of an environmental hazard, but that that all got cleaned up. But so nonetheless, you uh, you became interested in the story, and eventually became, yeah. you know, put a financial interest in it, and and so today it's in the process of being rebuilt or restored. Um, and there's a purpose behind all of this. Um, at least so I've read and I love the fact that, that, um, I mean, Steinbeck and, and Rickards, right. Was his, his partner in crime. That was kind of, of a a perfect merging of, um, art and science. If, if I can say that, um, or, or, um, and so that's kind of your, your, mo at this point with the boat and where you're going with the foundation yeah you know i i was i was lucky when i was a kid i i kind of always knew i wanted to be in you know in science but uh, i lived in a in a place in, in rural georgia that didn't have libraries they had these that actually jackie kennedy started the the, the thing was was these you know mobile book book uh, mobiles and they would come by 
a few times in the summer you could grab a bunch of books and I, I would grab anything adventure you know like uh, I liked any kind of you know uh, in, in, any kind of 